ओम ज्ञान निरंतर ज्ञान जन शलाक चक्षुर नीलिता येन तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः श्री महाभागवतम संस्थान चंद्र पोतक स्वामी के कंसर इज डिस्क्राइब हियर एज गुरुमति means was a bad tendency him and his ministers had a bad tendency and therefore they made the wrong decision brahma he brahma he sang he come in they considered that being inimical towards saintly persons would be for their benefit but they didn't realize that they are kala pasha nama kalapasha abhita they are bound surrounded by the rope of time namaraj he is very instructive everyone wants to act in terms of their own benefit but those who are durmati those who are of wrong inclination they don't understand what is actually for their own benefit even if they are learned they did scholar you see kansa he had some knowledge of the existential position of life from his discussion last day that is clear another example is ravana who was the grandson of one of grandson of one of the most famous Rishis Kulastya, and was very learned in Vedic knowledge, but he couldn't. He was also dumb. He couldn't consider what is for his own benefit, even though he was advised repeatedly, "Don't kidnap Sita." Even after kidnapping Sita, he was advised repeatedly. First of all, Marichi, when he came up to this plan, even though Marichi was a demon, he could understand it's not for your benefit. You better give this up. This idea. You live here happily in Lanka. We don't kidnap Sita. We will discuss that. I do mind. Yes, I do mind. No, no, no. no I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. So what to do? Because more uh, is it? How many people do not understand Hindi? Did not uh, don't understand Hindi. We can have an interpreter or something. All right, I can speak in Hindi then. Yeah, get me a log. Huh? Oh yeah. Otherwise, someone can translate in Hindi. Is there anyone here who can translate into Hindi or Gujarati? All right. But we also have. We also have someone here who doesn't speak. We need translation into Russian and Serbian also. That's going because if we speak in Hindi, then the Russian and the Serbian can't follow either. Why don't you sit and translate as it goes on? Can you do that? Do you want to? Or someone must translate in Gujarati. You can. Now we have three translations going on. All right. So, Marichi advised, don't kidnap. Then Vidishana advised, even Nandodari. He was given good advice, but because he's Durmati, he couldn't realize what is for his own benefit. Because he was thinking simply in terms of his own sense gratification, and he was thinking uh, that by his own power he could overcome. He didn't realize that he was Ravana. He did not realize that any, any demon doesn't realize that he's under the control of time. Different demons in history have taken benedictions by which they appear to become very powerful. They do actually become very powerful, but they falsely consider they have become, they've overcome the influence of time. They're not under the influence of nature, but everyone is under the influence of time. Ravana, Ranikeshipu, they conquer, they perform many sinful activities, but they thought by their own might they could conquer anyone who comes before them. But what they didn't know is that their sinful activities would eventually catch up with them. That it was only a matter of time before their sinful activities would be repaid. That they didn't realize. So Kamsa also is thinking, "What is my benefit? 
My benefit is to live very happily, dominating all my enemies and be in control of the situation. He was thinking, this is for my benefit. He didn't realize, despite having heard the Vedic philosophy, he didn't realize that actually he couldn't be happy in, situa- in, in any such situation because there is no happiness in this material world. So that he didn't realize. And that he also didn't realize that if he performs sinful activities by torturing the saintly people, that it's not for his benefit because he'll have to suffer severe karmic reactions. Therefore, it's described here, he's in the control of time. He doesn't realize. He thinks he is the controller. No one can stop him, but he's controlled. He couldn't take good of, he had his monthlies. Here the word is given, samantriya, after considering very elaborately. A similar word is there, mantri. Means, there's the word is there, mana, which means, means to consider. So mantri means one who considers very carefully and then gives advice. But his mantris, his ministers, they're also all demons, just like him. So they're not capable of giving proper or good advice. Even if he heard good advice, he said, he heard good advice from Rasudu. But because his nature was to be demoniac, therefore he preferred to hear from demons. He also heard from Rasudu. He could have followed Rasudu. Even he himself considered Rasudu to be of ideal character. But he preferred to listen to demons. It, it, he had a preference, his tendency, his inclination was like that. That means, uh, why is it that some people, they hear the scripture, they take up Krishna Bhakti, others hear the scripture, and they reject it, or they don't like to hear it. Now that is, one reason for that will be one's inclination from a previous life. Different people have different kinds of inclinations. That we understand from Gita, that the Yoga Brashta, one who has fallen from the path of yoga, it's because he's, on, he's been on the auspicious path, so his tendency will be to take that up again in a future life. Whereas those who are demoniac, that is described later by Krishna Gita, their tendency is to act in such a way that they fall down, again and again, into the lower species of life. So one tendency is there that is carried on from a previous life. It, it can be changed also by association. Prabhupada has quoted this verse, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastri, Kalavamati, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastri. That by association, one's tendency can be changed. Especially if one comes in contact with a very powerful sadhu. We see especially the case of Narad Muni, who delivered even very sinful people. Because the force of his bhakti was so strong by his association. He was able to uplift even a hunter, a very cruel hunter. He was able to deliver even residents of hell and sinful life. So association is very important. If we get the right kind of association, we can be benefited. But if our tendency is always to associate with those who are sinful, then even hearing the Vedic philosophy, he said, Tongue said, heard the Vedic philosophy, but he couldn't think what to do it was for his proper benefit. Now we see that Kamsa, he also accepted advice. In that sense, uh, he was a little more advanced than Vena Maharaj, who was also a demoniac king. And Vena, he didn't listen to anyone. He just did whatever he liked by himself. But Kamsa, of course, he was totally on the material platform, but he had the good sense to listen to ministers. He didn't think that I should just do it all by myself. But the, the problem is, he had the bad sense, you have the wrong kind of people as ministers. So although he understood that he should get some advice, but he appointed the wrong kind of people. Therefore, he acted in such a way that was not for his benefit. He considered it as his benefit, but it was actually ahita. Not opposite of benefit. 
Now, it seemed to him that by persecuting, it seemed to him and his ministers, that by persecuting the saintly people, that would be for his benefit. Because these saintly people, they were on the opposite party, they were on the party of Vishnu, who is his enemy. He couldn't understand. A demon, he can't understand. Why is Why doesn't God just let me enjoy? What's the problem with God? He should just let me enjoy. So Kansa was thinking like that, and his ministers were thinking like that. So the obvious solution seemed to be, well, just destroy the saintly people. What he didn't realize is that for every action there must be a reaction. Now you can never tell exactly what's going to happen in the future. Whatever you, whatever decision you make, you can't say what's going to happen, what exactly will come of it. It's very difficult to say. Many times, in, in our own personal life, in the lives of others, in the decisions of politicians, you can see how they made a decision to do something, thinking that it would be for their benefit, but actually it acted in another way. Just like we have at the present time, the uh, Prime Minister of Pakistan, previously another Prime Minister of Pakistan also, they appointed a low-ranking general as the head of the army, thinking that, well, he'll be grateful to me, and because he's not, wasn't such a big shot, he can remain under me. But what happened in both cases is that having got the power, they that happened with Bhutto also. We don't, didn't see what happened to Nawaz Sharif yet. But with Bhutto, the man who appointed, man he appointed, brought from underneath, but eventually had him executed. So similarly, at the present time, the Prime Minister of Pakistan, his, the man he appointed, he brought from under, is acting independently of him and overriding his authority. So it seemed that it was a good decision to appoint such a person, but it worked against him. And there are so many instances in history, in our own life, we make the wrong decision. We make it, whenever we make a decision, there's some calculation, what will happen. And life is full of decisions, what to do. Life, and all the time there are different decisions to be made. How to act in any given circumstance. There may be very big decisions in our life whether or not to get married, who to marry, what kind of occupation to take up, then who to marry our children to, which kind of educational course to take. These are very big decisions. For that we are advised to take some advice from elderly persons who are generally supposed to be more wise, considered to be and we may take astrological advice, and it's good to take advice. Ultimately, uh, we should take, everyone should take advice from a guru, who will advise us according to those who are demoniac, they don't know what is favorable action, or that action which should be performed, and that action which should not be performed. Therefore, they always get in trouble. The demons always get in trouble means they have to go to hell. It's a lot of trouble. Because they always act in the wrong way. Which is Dhurmati. They consider which is correct to be incorrect and which is incorrect to be correct. Therefore, one should take advice from Guru. Guru means who knows the laws of material nature, knows how they act, and knows how to give advice in any certain circumstance. Now, it may be considered that, well, the Guru also doesn't know what will happen in the future. If I take his decision, if I follow what he says, then uh, maybe that won't work out also. Maybe there will be some fault there. You never hear it. You can't say what will happen. The Guru also may not know. But the point is that Guru will give advice that is in concordance with the laws of Shastra. Uh, specifically, the Guru has the 
inner means he's supposed to have the inner understanding of the Shastra, which is how to please Krishna. How to act in such a way so as to please Krishna. Otherwise there are many different rules and regulations in the Shastra. How to act on the karmic platform, keeping ourselves as much as possible free from karmic reactions, performing pious activities and not performing impious activities. So one who is expert in understanding the karma kanda, he can give advice. You should do like this to get some favorable result, or you should do like this to mitigate some unfavorable or sinful activity that you have performed. But Vaishnava, he should be a guru. Vaishnava Shvapacha guru, even if he's not Mantra Tantra Vishavada, even if he's not expert in all the Karma Kandya sections of the Vedas, if he knows how to please Krishna, he should be approached. That is the inner understanding of the laws of action and reaction. That we should act so as to please Krishna. Now, we may say that, yes, he has the idea how to please Krishna, but still, the advice you give, it may not work out. Just like, for instance, there are so many in city here. Well, my, my guru said not to get married, but then you know, I want to get married. And of course, if someone's getting married, usually they won't even listen to Guru's advice. I mean, it's a very strong urge is there. But it may be a Guru gives, uh, you do this, you go, you go to Africa. So, so go and preach in Africa. So that devotee goes and preaches in Africa. Then, uh, due to whatever, lack of association, or some fall down, or many fall down. So, should we say that in this case, the Guru gave a wrong decision? Nowadays, some people are saying that Prabhupada, he gave some wrong instructions. That, for instance, he set up these schools where the children had to be away from their parents. It's very cruel. It's not proper. It didn't work, see? Children just turned out to be a bunch of bums. You don't have to say that. They'll make a court case against you. But, uh, Hare Krishna, that's off the record. So, uh, Prabhupada made a wrong decision. They said, no. How can you say? Because when he said, what is in relation, what is pleasing to Krishna is the Vedic system that the children should go to Guruku and shouldn't be with their parents. Otherwise, too much attachment. They're supposed to be trained in detachment. Of course, the, in the Guruku, they're supposed to be looked after nice. That may not have happened so well in our goal. But you can say there are so many things that didn't work out. Why is that? Because Guru made a wrong decision? Now, wrong decision, you say, what is the meaning of the wrong decision? If something doesn't appear to work in a favorable way. But then also we don't know what is actually pleasing to Krishna. Just like the body goes to Africa, and he suffers different fall downs. So we could say that, well, if he didn't go to Africa, if he just stayed all the time in Prabhupada, then he wouldn't have fall down, he wouldn't be better off, and then he wouldn't have preached in Africa. That's taking a risk. And that risk, and taking that risk, even though he may have suffered, in his own spiritual life, that so many other people got benefited by Krishna consciousness. So, it may be that he pleased his guru more by preaching in Africa, even with difficulties, even with setbacks to his own personal spiritual life, and if he had simply sat very comfortably and chanted and not fallen down, it may be. Nowadays, we see that some of Prabhupada's godbrothers and some of Prabhupada's godbrothers disciples are coming out into the world and preaching Krishna Bhakti as Bhaktisthan Sasra Thakur wanted them to and 
Some of them are very learned and have been following Krishna Bhakti all their life. Somewhat mild in character, so they're being recommended as Paramahamsas. But you see, they must be great Paramahamsas all their life. They've been sitting in an ashram, chanting, studying. So, maybe that they're Paramahamsa, you can't say this way or the other way. Of course, Bhaktivinoda you know, Thakur, his recommendation was that you'll see a Vaishnava by how many new Vaishnavas. You will judge who is more advanced devotee by who has made, converted more people from the path of materialism to Krishna consciousness. So, it may be very safe to sit in an ashram. One may become very learned and may cultivate saintly qualities. These are all very good things and very nice things. But he may not get the blessings in the same way as one who takes the risk and goes out into the world and preaches Krishna consciousness. Preaching means taking so many risks. If you're going to do something to Krishna, you have to make so many decisions. When you take, make a decision, you take a risk. Because it may come this way, it may come that way. It's like you could also say, well, Prabhupada made so many mistakes, he made sannyasis, he fell down. One of Prabhupada's servants is traveling with Prabhupada, he was falling, traveling around the world and falling down. He stayed more than two days in any place, and he fell down. Prabhupada found out that he sannyas. He lasted two weeks. At least he lasted two weeks instead of two days without falling down. They could say, well, it was a mistake. That's one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is that Prabhupada is giving a chance to, to infuse someone, to take up a higher service. From that point of view, you could say that everything Prabhupada did was a mistake because so many of his disciples fell down. Why only the Sanyas? So many fell down. Prabhupada explained that. He said, yes, I'm initiating so many people they fall down, but Prabhupada wrote, I'm prepared to go to hell for Lord Chaitanya. Prabhupada actually said that once. He said, my only mistake was I initiated so many unqualified people. So you could say it's a mistake, but on the other hand, it is pleasing to Krishna. So that, the fact that it's pleasing to Krishna, if someone takes that risk to preach, to fulfill the mission, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that is why it pleases the Krishna. That means taking a risk. There's no preaching without taking risks. You can give a lecture here and there. That you may do. But actually to go in the world and act in such a way as to change it, to change people's way of thinking, to go against the current of thinking, to grab people out of Maya, situate them in spiritual life, it's not such an easy job. Nowadays it seems relatively easy to us. We simply go out and preach and people are interested and they take it up. That we're fine. It wasn't like that previously, especially in the Western countries. Even here in India, not many people were coming to Prabhupada's movement in the beginning. In the Western countries, now you see in the sannyasi, you can go and travel here and there, give lectures, people come forward. They ask for initiation and so many things. But it wasn't like that. Previously, Prabhupada said, I had to shed gallons of blood just to make one devotee. And that was a fact. Prabhupada had to put so much endeavor in convincing people, not only philosophically, but in person, feeding them in so many ways. It wasn't very easy. Now the atmosphere, there's an atmosphere, some atmosphere of Krishna consciousness is there. So people are coming. Previously it was very, very difficult to make any devotees. But by Prabhupada's potency, which was awarded to him by Krishna due to his great compassion, his adherence to his spiritual master's instruction, that he must preach Krishna consciousness all over the world. Therefore he tried to do that, which others considered impossible. Or maybe they weren't even, who was even thinking about preaching Krishna countries all over the world except Prabhupada. No one was thinking. So if God brothers had been sent and come back without any tangible result, 
they got some praise for going and preaching from their contemporaries for having preached in the Western countries, but there wasn't anything very tangible to show. Prabhupada went without any institutional support, and just went down in the uh, just went in the worst part of the worst part of the worst city in the world. People advised him against it. Why are you going there? Baba took the decision. It was a risk going down among the, the bums of the world. Very dangerous people who can rob you because they need to take money, drink. Baba took that decision. It was a risk. Every step it was a risk. But he took it to serve Krishna. Krishna rewarded that. In so many ways you could say in the States, Baba was pushing book distribution. And even the devotees were becoming quite aggressive. Prabhupada knew, he gave some cautioning, but on the other hand, he wanted he, the devotees, when Prabhupada was present, there was a controversy. Some devotees were saying, this book distribution is too aggressive. Prabhupada said, well, all right, you think it's too aggressive. You do the same thing, unaggressive, non-aggressive. But the book distribution should go on. Prabhupada said that this is my desire. You have, to, you have to fulfill the desire of the Guru to distribute books. So they're doing it. If you can do it, that's good. If you can do it non aggressively, that's good. So they're doing it. First you see how to fulfill the Guru's desire. Then you talk aggressive, non aggressive. They're saying that people are getting this uh, books are going up. Now even in retrospect we could say that that aggression in book distribution it went too far, you could say, because people became disappointed, the public had a bad impression of us, but on the other hand they had some impression of us. Just like one time the news came to Prabhupada that one of his godbrothers was criticizing. You see in Japan a report has come that the Hare Krishna people are they're acting very aggressively and taking money and giving their books. Prabhupada said, well what are you doing in Japan? At least we're in Japan. You're not even there. You're simply sitting in your ashram criticizing. So in the same way it could be said, well, you know, the book distribution went on and there was talk and made a bad impression. At least there was some impression. People were thinking. People were, they were getting these books. So many books were going on. There were, even some cartoon came in the American newspapers how a man gets up in the morning and goes out as soon as he walks out of his door, someone comes and sells him a book. And when he, in his office, someone comes and sells him a book. And when he comes home, his daughter comes home from school and says, hey, someone came to our school and sold us a book. And he opens his fridge and there's a book in there too. So that idea, people knew that so many books are going out, it was making a big impression, no doubt. And demons were coming, to, were becoming disturbed. They're making court cases, and one senator, United States senator, very prestigious position among the demons, he said that uh, this Krishna conscious movement is very dangerous, and if it's not checked, it may take over the government within 12 years. So Prabhupada is very pleased to hear this. That's good. Demons are afraid. So it may seem that, well, it's very bad, you know, people with a bad impression came in the newspaper, so many books are being distributed, so many people are joining our movement. Now maybe, I don't know, maybe the people have a better impression of our movement, if they have any impression whatsoever. But who's becoming a devotee of in America, at least, very right? few people are joining our movement. So it may, what superficially, I not say I don't want to get into a big controversy here, but I'm saying that superficially it may appear to be better that you don't distribute so many books and that you don't you're not so aggressive. But on the other hand, the uh, the order of Guru is there, Prabhupada's desire is there. That means that if Prabhupada's desire is fulfilled, then there will be all auspiciousness, even though it may appear as inauspicious. If Vasudev and Devaki hadn't had Krishna as the son, it, would, it might, might have seemed that their life would have been more auspicious. 
because of having Krishna as their son, they had to suffer in so many ways. So you may say that it's very inauspicious to have Krishna as your son, you see. Asadeva and Devaki had to suffer so much. It would have been better if they had just been an ordinary family. Hamdo, Hamare, Ek, something like this, instead of ordinary family, Vasudev could have, you know, he wasn't much of, he was a Shatra, but he wasn't much of a fighter, so he could have got a job in the LIC or something like this. Could have opened up the LIC, he didn't have the LIC, he could have opened it up, could have become a good businessman, or opened up, he was a Mathura Basi, brand, not brand, he could have opened a Mathura sweet shop, a very famous Mathura sweets, could have lived very happily, comfortably, but he had Krishna as his son, so many difficulties, one after the other. And practically everyone who was connected with Krishna had one difficulty after the other. The Pandavas, one difficulty after another. The bridge buses, so many demons, every day some demon was coming. So in that way they were disturbed. And then the demons stopped coming, but then Krishna left. So they were even more disturbed. They were suffering so much in separation from Krishna. So it appears that if we take the Krishna consciousness, we have to suffer in so many ways. So maybe you should say, well, the best decision is not to take any decision. Don't be Krishna conscious. That's the best thing. Then you can live very comfortably, you see. You don't have to get up early in the morning. You don't have to follow any regulated principles. You can do whatever you like. The illusion is good. Sometimes you hear. The are living in the ashram. I think, well, I want to leave the ashram so I can do what I like. Big illusion. You have to do what some boss wants you to do. You get some job. You have to do what he wants you to do. I don't like the camera president. It's too bossy. Tells me what to do. Then you get a go work in some factory or office. Otherwise, you sit at home. Somehow get some money, smoke dope. Be free. Be independent. But you're under the control of time. You have to suffer. So in one sense you can say it's a risk. Some, in some places, in some parts of the world, in here in India also, they often they recommend it. Don't join. Don't join this club. Don't join the temple. It's too much of a risk. You see what happens if you're chanting Hare Krishna for so many years and then you get old and no one will look after you. See, it's a great risk. What will you do? Better you stay at home and get an LIC policy and live comfortably. No risk. See, no one's going to look after you and it's gone. So you can uh, stay at home, live very comfortably. Have an LIC policy. Everything will be very nice. The only problem is that you run a much greater risk of repeated birth and death. Whereas if you give your life to Krishna, then Krishna will look after you. It's better than LIC policy. An LIC policy, you even see someone was telling me his factory burned down. So, I asked, you didn't get insurance? I got 25%. I didn't give you full amount. They have their tricky way. They're not going to give you all the money. So he got 25%. But, but if you give to Krishna, or life, Krishna, then you get more than 100% back. Oh, really? Does that mean after 25 years in this gone, I'll get some lump sum payment, 20 lakhs. You see, I, I collected two crores, so they should give me at least 25%, sometimes a year, sometimes 20. See, I did so much service, if I did the same amount of work in any company, you see I have PhD, I would have been earning 10,000 rupees a month, they should pay me. It's a materialistic way of thinking. What can I get out of it? I'm doing service for Krishna. What about me? You may think like that. Then you don't get the mercy of Krishna. 
You can get some money maybe, you don't get the mercy of Krishna. Prabhupada was asked about that once. He said, he was told that we're hiring people to do different jobs. So that also goes towards the service of Krishna. So do these people, do they get any benefit of devotional service? Prabhupada said, no. You're working for a salary, you get a salary. You work for Krishna, you get Krishna's mercy. So it may seem that by taking a materialistic decision, it's for your best benefit. Just like Kamsa was thinking, let's kill all these single people, that's for our best benefit. But, he didn't realize how the laws of nature are going on. Same way here, I mean, they think that well, not to serve Krishna, or to serve Krishna in my own way that I decide, that is for my best benefit. But we don't, we don't know, you have to see how Krishna is pleased. If Krishna is pleased, that's another wrong idea. You can you test of how Krishna is pleased if I am pleased. But it's wrong the other way. You should act in such a way that Krishna is pleased. And how do you know if Krishna is pleased? If, because it may seem that you go through so many difficulties. That in itself may be an indication that Krishna is pleased. If you have many difficulties, then we may think that Krishna is blessing you with so many problems. Someone may say, well, since I took to Krishna Bhakti, you had so many problems. Really? You were so fortunate. Krishna gave you so many problems. That's good. Krishna is purifying. That requires transcendental vision to see that. We have many difficulties, how Krishna is acting in such a way to purify you. So this is a devotee's vision, which in non-devotee you can't see that. They have a different way of thinking. Asatkare satta kalimani, those who reject the mercy of Nityananda, they take that which is untrue to be true, and vice versa. And they're also in Gita, that the devotees, what is nice for them is they, for the non devotees and vice versa. A completely different way of looking at life and understanding life. The materialistic person cannot understand why someone should dedicate themselves to why should you dedicate yourself to God? You can't see him, you can't touch him. Actually the devotee see. But the materialistic people they can't see. They think it's just some fantasy or illusion. The devotee experiences Krishna, gives his life to Krishna. And the devotee has the faith that even if things seem to be going wrong, ultimately Krishna will deliver me. I have to keep my faith in Krishna. We never see why we're seeing these stories in Bhagavata. All the great devotees, what is their qualification? Their qualification is they kept their faith in Krishna. They never thought that so long as the faulty things have gone wrong, it's not working out, okay, it's time to blue. They never thought such a thing. They started, they kept with Krishna. Krishna is very pleased by that. They didn't make some demoniac program for their own benefit, like counsel, which ultimately works not in their benefit, completely opposite. The devotee has to be very careful to keep himself on the transcendental platform by adhering to Guru, Sadhu and Shastra. Guru, Sadhu and Shastra give us direction how to go through life in a way that is for our actual benefit, which we can't see. On the material platform, we can't see what is for our ultimate benefit. But Guru, Sadhu and Shastra, they dictate from above the material platform. They give us directions to act in a way that is for our ultimate benefit on the spiritual platform. At this point, comes on this. Otherwise, he is very intelligent. He considered carefully, taking advice from his ministers. And then what did he do? Absolutely the wrong thing. He got bad advice. And he accepted that because of his bad intelligence. 
The one should purify his intelligence by following the process of sadhana bhakti and take proper guidance, proper advice from Guru who direct us how to act in our lives in general directions, specific directions. Not that we uh, have to run to Guru every moment for a specific direction. This Guru uh, doesn't manipulate us like a puppeteer manipulates a puppet, but rather gives general directions and gives intelligence by, by speaking spiritual knowledge, directing the disciple in such a way that their spiritual intelligence is awakened. So that they don't have to every moment, like a child, run to the Guru, but take guidance, understanding what is the proper thing to do. Of course, any major decision in the devotee's life, that should be confirmed by consulting his Guru. But not that every little thing. He should act also using the intelligence received from Guru, based on the knowledge that is received from Guru and Shastra. Of course, in doing that, you may make some mistake also, in which case you'll be corrected by the Guru, just as a child is corrected by the parent. The parents, they give some direction to the children, and gradually, as they grow older, they give them more scope to act independently. Then, in acting, gradually, they're acting independently, they'll make mistakes. So the parents, they correct the child, and this way the training goes on. Hare Krishna. Is there any question? take it that way. Well, we have the, uh, the problem with the blessing from Krishna. How many people take it that way? Dhruva Maharaj took it that way. Kalad Maharaj took it that way. These are the Mahajanas. These are great personalities. So our process is to follow in the footsteps of the Mahajanas. We may not get difficulties at the level of Kalad has. But definitely we're going to get difficulties. However much you arrange, Whatever arrangement you make, generally the more simply we live, the less difficulties we have. That's one of advice. But even then, even if you live very simply, so many difficulties may come. There are so many cases of Rishi just living very peacefully, very pious life, and all of a sudden so many difficulties come. Jamadagni was just in his ashram being nice. And, uh, you know, eventually all his, his sons got killed and he got killed. Not all of his ashrams. And so many, Janu Muni was sitting meditating, all of a sudden his whole ashram was washed away by the young one. Of course, that was a blessing. Bhagirat was taking the Ganga and he, everything was going nice. He came down from the Himalayas, he was all getting towards the sea, and all of a sudden Ganga vanished. And life is like that. So many things. So many things can go wrong at any time. Even if you're even if you're very peacefully sitting. So how many people can take it like that? Those who have heard from Guru Sadhu and Shastra and those who have ingested that, they can understand. That's why we're having this class. Otherwise, uh, there's no need for a Bhagavad class. You can just eat, sleep, drink, be merry and enjoy. You don't have to have Bhagavad class. Bhagavad class is meant for giving some instruction for our purification. You're supposed to come to a higher platform. If the devotee after practicing Krishna consciousness for so many years is still on a materialistic platform, it's not a very good credit. It's supposed to come up. Must come up to a better level. Rupa Goswami people recently lost his job. No one expected. 
No one ever expects such a thing. How, what to do? He has to understand from the point of view of Shastra. Ultimately, Krishna has a plan for everybody. If you think like that, then you can tolerate. Otherwise, you, you, in such difficulty, you could become an atheist also. Prabhupada gave that example of the German women, those who are left over after their sons, husbands, brothers, they all, they all fathers. Mostly they were all killed. German women, they were praying. In those days, at least after the Second World War, they didn't send the women to fight also. Only the men. So even the boys from age 14, at the end, they were also fighting. So the women were praying, let our fathers, sons, brothers, husbands come back. Mostly they didn't come back. They all got killed. So then uh, so many people in Germany became atheists. Because they thought, pray to God and God didn't help them.